Let's begin by setting up our module folder and making sure that we're including a JavaScript file. Go ahead and go to your build a module resource directory and copy the interact folder. This is a module called interact. And then go to your Drupal directory and paste it in your sites, all modules, custom folder. Let's go ahead and take a look at the files here. We have several JavaScript files, one here, one here, and one here, and then we have our basic module files, our .module file, our .info file, and then we have a .css file. In our first examples, we're going to use a method of including a JavaScript file that uses the .info file. So go ahead and open up your interact.info file. Here we have the basic information that we, we would have in our .info file. And then at the bottom we have a scripts item. And you can tell it's an array because we have the brackets. And we're adding interact.js. What this will do is add this script to every page on our Drupal site. So if we want to include our script conditionally based on being on certain pages, we would have to use a different method. And we'll cover that later. But for now, this is good enough for us to begin using JavaScript examples. I'm going to jump back to the directory here. If we open up the .module file, we'll see that it's completely blank. There's nothing in it. We don't need anything in it just yet. I'm going to jump back to the directory. And let's go ahead and open up our interact.js file. Right now it's blank but let's go ahead and add some code to it. Jump back to your directory and go ahead and open up the steps folder and open up the first step, which is for interact.js and it's called simple jQuery selector. Go ahead and copy this code and paste it into your interact.js file and save it. Okay, so once we've installed our module, it will include this file interact.js and it will execute this code on every page load. And what we're going to do is grab some text from the heading tag and we'll use an alert statement in order to display a JavaScript alert on the page. So this is just plain JavaScript here, but this line includes some jQuery. We're establishing a variable called text and we're giving it a value of and then we're using an object called jQuery and we're passing it one parameter, which is h1. Now, this is the jQuery object that is the beginning of virtually any statement that you make inside of code, inside of JavaScript files in Drupal. This is because jQuery is so useful that we'll typically grab any code that we need to adjust using the jQuery method. And then we're using a method called text and notice that we're connecting text with this first statement by a dot. Now what dot does is it takes that whatever it's been returned from this first part and it runs this next part on it. So jQuery passing h1 gets ret it returns something and then text runs on it. When we're working with jQuery almost every time a jQuery object is returned from a jQuery call. So this allows us to string multiple statements together that are acting with the jQuery object simply by using the dot syntax. So we could add another dot and another statement here, another dot and another statement. It just so happens that the text method returns a simple string instead of a jQuery object. So we wouldn't be able to add on additional commands to the end of this. But this is the first time that we're using a selector, and that's what's right here. It's a very simple selector. It's just selecting a tag. And what this will do is look for any h1 tags on the page and return it as an object. And if there's multiple h1 tags, it will return all of those in the same object. For our page, we only have one h1 tag, so this will return a single object. This text method grabs the text that's inside of this HTML that's returned from this tag. 
In this case, there's only some text inside of this HTML, so this text will be fairly straightforward. If this h1 tag include, included HTML as well, all that HTML would get stripped out, and text would simply return the text that's inside of that HTML. And then we're running the alert on this text, so we should be able to see the text that's being pulled from this h1 tag. Now there's a problem with this code. By default, JavaScript files will be included in the header of the HTML file, which means that when this JavaScript runs, none of the page content has actually been loaded yet. So when we go to try to grab the content that's in the h1 tag, we're not going to find anything there because that content doesn't yet exist. So we could solve this by a number of methods, and we'll cover that in the next example. Let's go ahead and make sure that this is saved, and then let's install our example and see what happens when our code runs. I'm on the modules page, which is at admin slash modules, and I'm going to scroll down to the build a module section, and we're going to enable the interact module. I'm going to scroll down and click save configuration. Okay, so we see our alert here. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And it was blank. That means that the content that we were looking for in the heading tag didn't exist. So let's go ahead and use another jQuery utility in order to make sure that our code runs only after all of the code has been loaded on the page.